Welcome to Esports in a Nutshell, having fun with the world of esports one week at a time. I'm your host, Mark Register. I have a delightful show for you with this week's top stories. The effect of roster locks and fines on players' careers, the CSGO skins gambling exodus, the Esports Integrity Coalition, and then a rapid-fire rundown of everything in esports. Now, our main story for the week, players' careers, a far side comic come true. This week alone, Valve increases their roster lock from three months to six, not allowing teams to change their rosters as frequently, causing players to be locked into a team for a minimum of six months. Last March, team members of Luminosity signed a letter of intent with Luminosity, then signed contracts with SK Gaming, consequently going against E-League's rulebook of changing their rosters after submitting their final roster to the league. This leads to E-League's decision this week to ban Luminosity from the rest of the season. Then the rest of the teams in the E-League sign a petition to get SK Gaming removed as well. Australia Authority benches player Equinox for the rest of the season in hopes to make money on his buyout, being so generous as to cut his buyout fee in half. Equinox expresses he just wants to get back to playing. Optic Gaming's Karma gets suspended complaining about uh, playing players who were using light machine guns and that a game was called off due to poor connectivity in the Call of Duty World League. The Call of Duty World League player rules prohibit public criticism of the league with fines and suspensions to enforce it. Aix and Fizzerp also get fined for being critical of the league on social media. The fines and suspensions Activision doles out are not publicly released like what Riot does. Riot follows through on their transparent penalty tracker by warning Keith and Slushy for account sharing, banning Brandy for two matches due to extremely negative in-game behavior. Part of their penalty system includes fines just like the NBA. NBA pros like Shaquille O'Neal paid over $145,000 in fines throughout his career, but he made $291 million from his player contract alone. So I think any player would welcome fines like that with open arms as long as those fines came with the paychecks to match. More rules are being implemented by eSports leagues that restrict career movement and issue more suspensions and fines for players and teams. Is this helping players' careers? These rulings are helping the players' careers of the future. At its worst, it's ending and stunting careers now. Starting uh, the macro, then zooming in, E-League and Valve are restricting organizations from swapping players like Tinder dates and are making organizations and players commit to each other for a minimum of six months, which happens to be the world record for the longest Tinder relationship. In traditional sports, players uh, players sign multi-year, multi-million dollar deals. In esports, the majority of players make a few thousand dollars a month and have an even shorter window of time for potential potential earnings. That said, Valve and E-League's ruling on roster locks will create more stability for players and the leagues as a whole, so it's a very good thing for players' careers. Until you hit exceptions like the Australia Authority sitting on Equinox's contract, benching him, trying to squeeze out cash for trading him, not letting him play the game. Clever girl, Australia Authority. Zooming in to individual player rulings, getting suspended and fined for bad-mouthing the league you're playing in is bad on both sides. Yes, there are some problems with the league, and the best way to resolve those issues are to deal with the league directly. Not get on your Twitter followers, you know, get your Twitter followers on your side and complain about it publicly. Now, to be fair uh, to the players... It's up to the leagues to make sure they have a fast and effective feedback loop for fixing problems like lag issues, which affect the outcome of the game. And finally, fines for negative in-game play. Yes, absolutely. Fines. You so fine, you blow my mind. But they should be proportionate to salary. Shaq made $14.5 million per year over 20 seasons, equaling uh, $291 million in his career, just from his salary alone, and paying $145,000 in fines, equaling 0.04% of his total salary. 
one of the most fine uh, players in the NBA. So let's be generous and say the a, a top player makes two hundred thousand dollars a year over a lifetime of ten years, which is generous as well as making. So he would make two million dollars. Then using Shaq um, as an example with his fines from the NBA, uh, over a 10-year spam, that player, that esports player, should be fined a maximum of a thousand bucks. And now the Counter-Strike skin gambling exodus, the end of Buffalo Bills' favorite pastime. CSGO Wild, which allows users to convert their Counter-Strike skins into emeralds, gambling using them using coin flips and roulette, then exchange the emeralds back to cash is no longer allowing American counts to gamble. Fantasy esports betting site Vulcan, who raised $13.3 million, is shutting down and pivoting to Twitch chat games using their recently acquired TwitchAlerts.com company as a springboard. But not everyone is making a graceful exit from the skin gambling scene before Justice Beaver lays down his legal dam. Trevor Martin and Tom Castle and Josh Beaver, no relation to Justice Beaver, failed to declare their ownership of the betting site CSGO Lotto, which they were using on their channels to promote the site, also face allegations of rigging their games so they appeared to win big on camera. Out of nowhere, Lewis Stewart Psy Syndicate willingly came out after this debacle, saying he took part in rigged gambling site promotions without full disclosure and causing him to get a Valve ban, but he wins over most of his fans by getting ahead of it. But things are not so good for CSGO Lotto founders Tom Castle and Trevor Martin, who have been finally told by their attorneys to publicly stop talking before but before they stop talking, Tom Castle tweets out, quote, I apologize to anyone who feels misled regarding the ownership of CSGO Lotto. I will always be more transparent from here on out. I do, however, stand very firmly behind the fact that CSGO Lotto has never and will never scam or steal from players. I've always disclosed that my CSGO videos were sponsored and even asked a YouTube employee if anything more was needed, and they said it wasn't. Transparency from here on out. End quote. This is not Tom Castle's first failure to disclose information, as in 2014, he received $30,000 to make two positive videos for the game Rise without disclosing their financial arrangement. Trevor Martin echoes Tom Castle's statement in two videos that are now private. Unfortunately for him, the first video he posted talking about CSGO Lotto, he said a friend introduced him to the site and that a site off and that the site offered him a sponsorship and he was thinking he was going to take it. You know, sometimes I write love letters to myself too. Trevor Martin is a part owner of Team Envious, who just secured a few million dollars from Sierra Maya 360 to build an esports venue in North Carolina. So, as not to jeopardize their growing investment, Team Envious releases a statement saying, quote, Trevor has never been involved in the operational or decision-making process of our team or company. He is not a managing partner, does not sit on our board, and has a very small minority stake in the business that operates Team Envious. We gave a small amount of equity to Trevor in return for his advertisement and support of our video content on the YouTube network. They went on to say they had nothing to do with his website, CSGO Lotto. Valve has since followed suit blocking CSGO Lotto from their API. Is this the end of the Counter-Strike skin betting industry? It's the beginning of the end. There's smoke, there's fire, there's a video of Tom Castle and Trevor Martin with the matches in their hand proving Billy Joel wrong, as in fact, they did start the fire. CSGO Wild got out of the American scene. Vulcan got ahead of it by pivoting to something else. But the reason the industry is going down is because you have people who know enough to, to game the system, but don't know enough to cash out before the law uses them to establish a precedent. So they're in trouble. And now, the Esports Integrity Coalition. Because we need another organization to enforce rules no game publisher will adhere to. The ESIC announces their existence to the world of esports with their official mission statement to, quote, be the recognized guardian of the supporting uh, guardian of the sporting integrity of esports and to take responsibility for disruption, uh, prevention, investigation, and prosecution 
of all forms of cheating, including, but not limited to, match manipulation and doping. The coalition's founding backers include ESL, DreamHack, Intel, SportRadar, Unicorn, Betway, with directors Bryce Blum, Anna Razwandowitz, and Commissioner Ian Smith, who spent the last 12 years as the legal director, then chief operating officer for the Federation of International Crickets Association. Cricketers Association. The coalition will appoint a management board for its annual first annual general meeting for July 2017. Will this organization be more effective than the other acronyms like KESPA, BESA, and WESA, and any other organization ending with the ESA uh, in the fight to become the FIFA of esports? The coalition is missing out on any game developer publishers and is not the first organization coming into the esports space on a crusade to make things better as ESL's World Esports Association came into the space in May as the champion for esports players in establishing league policies, player transfers, and rule sets. And it did not go well. To be fair, ESIC has one specific problem. They are setting out to solve. um, uh, They have one specific problem they're setting out to solve with a very specific tool to fix it. That tool, ESIC um, founding member Sport Radar, who specializes in using data to detect to detect fraud like match fixing, will be able to sift through the 7.4 billion handle in skins to pass on the red flags to Bryce Blum, who, if given the budget and the staff, could build cases against individuals and organizations uh, that are fixing matches or allowing minors to gamble without the proper checks in place, bringing them down to meet Justice Beaver, the crime-fighting beaver. But It's the game developer publishers that are the owners of this world, and all the ESAs are playing in their world until the developer publishers decide to step in and take over, or, in the best case scenario for ESIC, adopt and support their coalition. In the meantime, we will keep getting new talent sheriffs every few months. And now, here's the rapid-fire rundown of everything that's happening in esports to give you a table of contents if you're feeling scholarly or just the cliff notes. Dream Team puts their Call of Duty World League spot um, and team up for sale. Rocket League hits 5 million copies sold and $110 million in revenue across PC, PS4, and Xbox One. ESL announces CSGO Pro League Finals will be in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil on October 28th through the 30th. Southeast Asia's MESAT Satellite Systems launches their 24-7 esports channel, Every Good Game. The Face It Tournament app launches at the end of the month, automating tournament organization. Iranian ICG Esports Summer announces a $60,000 prize pool across 12 games taking place August 7th to the 13th. Manchester City signs FIFA player Kirian Kez Brown. That's eight football clubs with an esports division now. ESL CSGO Valve Major sells out their 14,000 tickets for their multi-day event with a million-dollar prize pool running July 5th through the 10th. Christian Baker for DigiDay reports the cost of reaching an esports fan is one-eighth the cost of reaching a mainstream sports fan. South African Eve Tech Championship uh, Champions League announces their $10,000 Counter-Strike tournament culminating August 15th. Missouri's Columbia College announces they will begin competing in League of Legends this fall with their 12 scholarship-supported players. ESL partners with Ubisoft and Xbox to launch their Rainbow Six Pro League with a $100,000 prize pool running from July to August 21st. Activision Blizzard makes their console game Skylanders into a Netflix TV series called Skylanders Academy. Futurama's showrunner Eric Rogers will help produce a series. China's Dalian Wanda will co-produce and distribute with France's Zed and Canal Plus. Herve Martin de Pierre, uh, Del Perrier's e-gaming's documentary Game Fever in 4K costing $1.3 million to make. Forge's CEO Jared Kim closes a $4.5 million Series A led by True Ventures after getting a $4.5 million seed round four months ago. Forge captures gameplay and allows you to bookmark it for highlighting after you after your session. Esports school Powerhouse Gaming opens up in France for pro gamers, leaders, streamers, bloggers, journalists, and event organizers. The courses will run between two to $7,000. UK's Game announces their competitive gaming zone where players can compete in esports titles such as Rocket League, Minecraft, and Counter-Strike. 
Ferguson Mitchell from Esports Observer points out that the largest LCS Facebook fan base comes from the Philippines, but suggests they are fake accounts bought and paid for uh, to inflate their numbers knowingly or unknowingly by Riot. Gfinity cashes in on that esports money, raising $4.7 million to develop their proprietary media player, tournament builder application, events, and working capital. ESPN will broadcast Evo Street Fighter tournament, but not the others. And Evo Street Fighter V tournament sees their entrance double from last year's 2,200 entrance to 5,000, fighting for a piece of that $100,000 prize pool. Super Smash Bros. Wii U and Melee have 5,000 entrants, but split between two games. Variety reports AT&T and Shirin Group announce their video subscription bundle focusing on anime, video games, and niche action sports content. The platform is being built on Elation, a part of AT&T and Shirin's Otter Media, which owns the 800,000 subscriber-based anime video platform Crunchyroll and multi-channel network Full screen. Well, that's it. I hope you learned and laughed a little, and I'll see you next week.